welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I am doing my March wrap up. We're at it again. I have a new author that I'm mad at this month and yeah. So if you are new to my channel, how I do my wrap ups is I start with the books that I like the least and then I work my way up to the books that I liked the most. So I have an author that I'm mad at this month and if you follow me on Instagram you know who it is. Every month I have these intentions of like oh I'm gonna love all the books that I read this month. Listen I never do. I never do. Spoiler alert it never happens. Before we begin before we begin um, I know most people like plug their Patreon, plug whatever they have going on, I'm going to be plugging my GoFundMe because my life is a fucking joke, okay? So basically, in the um, description box, I'm going to have a GoFundMe link for myself because I need surgery for my endometriosis and uh, um, it's a long story. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Siri doesn't even understand what the fuck is going on with my life. Um, it's a long story. I explained it the best that I could in the GoFundMe if you want to read that. But um, I need surgery for my endometriosis. I most likely have to see an out-of-network surgeon with my insurance. So it's going to be like $20,000 just for the surgeon. And then the hospital is out of network, the anesthesiologist, pathology, I need um, thoracic surgery because it's most likely the endometriosis is moving up into my diaphragm and my lungs, which is fucking dangerous, so I need it removed. And um, so now I'm looking at a thoracic surgery, possibly a bowel surgery, pelvic surgery. Like, listen, this is ridiculous. This is why more research needs to go into endometriosis because it is a terrible fucking disease and people are like oh it's just period pain no no my periods are literally fine <laughs> compared to everything else that's wrong with me so anyways um yeah i'm looking at a surgery that is basically the cost of buying a used car in 2023 so any help would be appreciated um, if you can just like read, share, donate if you can. Obviously, I'm not asking you to if you can't, but um, any any help is appreciated. Appreciated. <laughs> and also, thank you so 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 much to anyone who has already donated, already shared, and um, yeah. If you can just like keep sharing it, I don't know how else to like keep it circulating other than mentioning it on here and putting it in the description box. So yeah, anyways, other people are plugging their Patreon and their sponsorships to get more money. I'm trying to afford a fucking surgery, so uh, my life sucks. So anyways, uh, moving on to the video. If you're new here, hi, I'm a mess, clearly, obviously I'm a mess. So I am going to start with one star books. Now I read... 14 books this month? Let me pull up my my stats here, okay? Alright, I read 17 books this month. <laughs> Sorry, not to brag. Um, so I read 17 books and I'm just gonna jump right in because I got a lot to talk about. I had one, two, two one-star books that I fully read and finished and the worst book was the Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. I don't care. Listen, I don't care. I know all of her stands are gonna come for me. Everyone's mad at me. Everyone's gonna start a little like, mm, mm, one of these, mm, a blog post about me. They're gonna talk shit about me on forums online. <laughs> Listen, I don't care. I don't care. I read this book. This book is about this woman who's a housemaid for this like, rich woman and her husband and they have the perfect life but do they really behind closed doors she sees everything just kidding she doesn't see shit okay <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself anyways the the rich woman that hires her to be a house 
housemaid is like weird and sketchy and this family is like weird and the, the wife acts like one minute she loves her, the next minute she's being really like mean to her and we don't know like what's going on with this husband and wife. And um, yeah, the issue, this book wasn't terrible, okay? Um, but the issue that I had is that it is the exact same book as another popular thriller, which I don't want to say what it is because I don't want to like spoil the book for someone that plans on reading it. I mean, I highly recommend that you don't, but I mean, listen, I'm not going to sit here and like spoil books just because I'm mad at them, you know? Um, the issue is that it was 100% identical and the only thing changed were like little tiny details and like the prologue at the end or the epilogue at the end and it was just kind of like she literally ripped off this other thriller i was reading through it and i was like this sounds exactly like this other thriller that i read and i i just kept reading thinking you know so many thrillers have the same twists but I kept thinking like okay something's gonna be different and it wasn't it was the exact same book start to finish and I was like you're telling me all these people read this and didn't notice that if they've read the other book as well like you should immediately pick up on it and be like this is the same book so <clears throat> I went on Google <laughs> and I googled Frida McFadden plagiarism and this Reddit thread came up. Okay, listen, I'm not saying Reddit is like a scholarly journal or anything like that. But people are basically saying, I will leave it linked down below, actually. You know what? Let's air it all out. I don't care. I'm spilling all the tea. So <laughs> in this thread, it's people saying, you know, that this book was basically plagiarized because it's the same book as the other popular thriller. Not only that, there's also another one of her books that is 100% identical to Verity by Colleen Hoover. There is another one of her books that is identical to Psycho by Robert Bloch. And instead of the Bates Motel, it's the Baxter Motel. Also like two other books that are the exact same book as another book that I have never read, so I have no idea, but that's what people are saying. And then there's one book that is the same as the um, ironic song by Alanis Morissette. <laughs> like, the lyrics are in the book as quotes, and listen, and then people are saying like certain books are like ripoffs of TV shows. I don't think she has a book that she's written on her own, okay? And this is the issue that I have with Frida McFadden. I have receipts. I don't care. I'm spilling all the tea. I feel like the same people who get, like, offended over, like, silly things that, like, aren't really offensive are like, oh yeah, I love Frida McFadden. I don't care. But it's like, this is something that you literally should care about. I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Anyways, moving on. My next one star was A House at the Bottom of a Fucking Lake by Josh Mallerman. Mm, I read this book for the worst books that I read on my TBR according to Goodreads video, so I will leave it linked. I have full, full, full thoughts on this one, so I'm not really going to get into it because if you want to hear full thoughts, go check it out. But it's about these two teenagers who just swim and canoe and have sex and really weird that this guy is writing about this 17 year old's breasts. <clears throat> and then they find a house at the bottom of a fucking lake. That's, ooh, okay. This book was a DNF that was also in that vlog. There you go. So let's just get into two star reads. I read Velocity by Dean Koontz. This is a book where it's like this guy, he gets this letter, finds this note where it's like, if you do this, I will kill a school teacher. But if you don't do this, I will kill an elderly woman. Make your choice. You have 24 hours or whatever. And it sounds really good in premise, but I feel like Dean Koontz, like most of his books are such a miss for me because they just get like so 
boring and rambly. I mean, there are a few books of his that I really, really love, but this one just didn't hit the mark for me. And it was just like your typical kind of middle-aged man thriller. Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of a book that I would expect, like, some of my dad's age to be reading, which is fine, <laughs> which is fine. I am just not a 60 year old man, you know? That we're different people, okay? Um, it was very much just like, guy goes on a mission to find the killer and there's a detective involved and like that sort of vibe and I just, I gave it two stars. It wasn't my cup of tea. I am constantly worried that someone's breaking into my apartment literally at all times because of the situation that's going on in my life that I've only told a few people about, but oh, let's see, what's next? My next two star, surprisingly, was an Anya Alborn book, The Bird Eater. Um, this was my least favorite Anya Alborn so far, and um, this one, we are following this guy, Aaron, and his, he was raised by his um, aunt and uncle, and they were just mysteriously they, they, both of them had a very mysterious death, okay? And then now it's like 20, 30 years later or something, and he's going back to the house that they died in um, to just kind of clean up and deal with the situation sort of thing. And he gets there and weird things keep happening. He keeps seeing this like creepy boy following him around and lots of weird things are going on in this house and he's just like slowly descending into madness. So I really liked the first half of this book. I was completely hooked because I wanted to know obviously what was going to happen, but the second half, it just kind of got me andering and convoluted. I feel like there were a lot of questions that I had that just weren't answered. And some of it were, there were like plot holes that didn't make sense and I just found it to be very repetitive and like I just kind of stopped giving a crap the second half. So surprisingly, you know, I, I usually am obsessed with Anya Alborn, but this one just kind of missed the mark for me. So, oh wait, I have another two star read. It was The Replacement Wife by Darby Kane. I think I have the book. Hold on, hold on. The Replacement Wife by Darby Kane. So this one, um, we are following this woman who her, was it her brother-in-law? Yeah, her brother-in-law. She thinks that her brother-in-law is a murderer because every relationship that he goes into, it's like she goes missing, his ex-wife went missing, his current girlfriend is missing, like one of his ex-wives died, and like all these women that he's involved with either go missing, they die, etc. So she's like, he's a murderer. But no one believes her. She's trying to like discover what happened to his missing fiance, what's going on with him, and then like dealing with her husband because her husband's kind of gaslighting her a little bit but it was just kind of like I didn't give a shit like this book to me I thought it was kind of boring like some of the plot twists were predictable like you kind of knew where it was gonna go and overall it just wasn't a super like thrilling fast-paced thriller it was just I just didn't care I don't, I don't even know what else to say about this one. It was like 400 pages and I just felt like it was going on and on and on. Like I just didn't really care anymore. So yeah. Should we get into three star books next? Let's do it. My first three star is The Amendment by Kirsten Modulin, which is the second book to The Arrangement, um, which I read last year and I really, really liked. It's like I don't know. I, I don't know if it's like one of my all-time favorite thrillers, but like it's up there in that category. Do you know what I'm saying? So I read this last year as a buddy read with McKay, and in this one we are following. Sorry, people keep walking by, making eye contact with me. <laughs> so in this one, um, 
you're following this husband and wife and they make this arrangement because their marriage is kind of falling apart and they decide that they are going to start like going on dates and like seeing other people but they just can't tell the other person who it is and then it goes in all crazy directions really thrilling fast paced just like easy read kind of thriller um, this one obviously I can't tell you what it's about uh, unless you read the first one but I just kind of felt like this is just a series that doesn't need to go on anymore <laughs> like I really really loved the kind of cliffhanger that the first book ended on but this one it was just kind of like I don't know I almost felt like this book was pointless like it wasn't bad I did want to know you know what happened after the first book but I just kind of felt like what was the point you know I don't know I think the first half was just kind of like and then the second half got pretty thrilling and exciting but I just feel like this isn't a must read like if you absolutely need to read the second book because you just need to know what happens read it but if you just kind of like don't care I think it's totally fine to skip it honestly it was just kind of right down the the middle for me which is why I gave it a three star my next three star was playground by Aaron Beauregard which I featured in an extreme horror reading vlog which will be linked um, so if you want to hear full thoughts go check this out this we are following um, this group of children and basically this woman is evil she wants to kill a bunch of kids so she uh, sets up this playground and hands out flyers and she's like we need you to come test out this new playground equipment and the playground equipment is designed to murder the children and while their parents are watching listen it's fucked up yes I know it's extreme horror check trigger warnings clearly need I say more um think of this as like saw but with children it's fucked up it's fucked. it's yeah full thoughts in that vlog then then what is my next three star I think I had more than that maybe they're all 3.5s moving in the 3.5s I tried my hardest to read a fantasy book for the first time in my life I read Ninth House by Lee Bardugo is that her name and I liked it but I didn't like it so in this book we are following this girl what the heck was her name I don't remember her name I don't remember her name anyways she Alex she is in this secret society at Yale was it Yale oh my gosh my brain so Yale calls her and they're like, hey, we want you to uh, come over for a full scholarship, baby. And she was like, oh, well, that's weird because I'm a homeless drug addict. And Yale's like, yeah, we know. We want you to come, um, come over for a full scholarship because she can see grays, which are ghosts. And she can see them in full color, which other people can't. And basically, the ninth house wants her to join them so she can watch over the other eight houses. They're like fraternities, and they do these like really fucked up experiments on people. And so they want Alex to kind of watch over and make sure nothing is sketchy going on in these other eight houses. Am I even explaining this properly? And basically, there's a murder that happens on campus that she thinks has something to do with what's going on, and then her mentor goes missing, so we're following these two different storylines. I liked it, but it was very confusing for me. I didn't really... My light died again. Yes, this happens every video. Megan, when are you going to charge your camera equipment? Listen, I do... But the battery doesn't last very long and I'm not going to stop the video to charge it, okay? Yeah. Um, so I found it to be confusing because I feel like there were a lot of things about this 
world or about the fantasy elements that I just didn't know how they worked and there was a lot of lingo like made up fantasy lingo thrown around and I was just kind of like what the hell is she talking about and I was just confused like I didn't really I don't know I don't know if I'm a huge fantasy person because I get confused so easily and I'm like I don't know what's going on because I just don't know what's going on so I was just getting confused and I don't know I just I don't know how I feel at the end it was kind of like a thousand things were thrown in there and it's like well this person was inside of this person and I'm like what the fuck so I feel like maybe if I did drugs I don't know I don't know I feel like I would have to be high or something um I, I just don't know I tried um I got the audiobook for Hellbent and I was like, I like it enough to try to read the second book. I tried and I failed. I had to DNF immediately after the audiobook started for Hellbent. I had no clue what the hell was going on. I didn't know what the hell she was talking about. I was so confused. So I don't know. I'm looking for like an easier fantasy book to get into. <laughs> My boyfriend really wants me to try reading Mistborn. The Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, McKay recommended Throne of Glass to me. If you think either of those would be like a good easy fantasy read for me, let me know. Maybe I will film a vlog where I like become a fantasy girl for a week. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. My other 3.5 was Until Summer Comes Around by Glenn Rolfe. So this one is a coming of age vampire story. So in this one, we are following um, our main character Rocky. And he falls in love with this girl November that he meets at this like, it was like this beach, beach town with a Ferris wheel. It was kind of like a fair carnival fair. Listen, my brain is not working. <laughs> it's like a beach with a Ferris wheel. I don't know. But anyways, it's set in the 80s. So it's giving you those like 80s vibes with like different references to 80s bands. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And um, so he's like, there's like 17 and he falls in love with this girl. And her brother is a vampire okay and there's different chapters where like things are going on in this town and people are dying people are going missing like no one knows what's going on in this town like, think like edward cullen but like more scary like more terrifying the vampire so yeah anyways um yeah so we are following these kids while the town is just like in an uproar because of what is going on with these vampires. So yeah, I think it was fun. Uh, like I said, I like the 80s references. I was really invested in our main character Rocky and I gave it a 3.5 because I would have loved to see more character development and I wanted to know like more about Rocky, more about November, the girl that he loves. Um, I wanted to know more about the vampires like I almost wish that this was longer like I, I I don't know I'm such a huge character driven reader so the fact that like the plot was happening and moving along and I was like whoa 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 <laughs> like I need to know more right um so yeah that was really my biggest issue with it I think um I don't know it's almost like a compliment that I wish that this was longer so I'm definitely interested in checking out um, more books by Glenn and he seems like such a nice man so if you want like a cute little coming-of-age vampire story check this one out moving into four star reads I had a reread of a good girl's guide to murder I'm trying to finish off the trilogy so this is about Pip and Pip is writing her this is a YA thriller uh, but Pip is writing like her final school paper for high school and she is basically trying to prove the innocence of this um, boy that went to her school and he was basically accused of murdering his girlfriend and she is trying to prove his innocence and find the killer for her school paper. And, and this is so much fun because it's all mixed like media, 
there's interviews, there's text messages, there's so many different things and the audiobook is fantastic because you literally hear like she'll call someone, you hear the phone ringing and then there's it's a full cast. Um, when she sends text messages you like hear her typing and you hear the little like boop 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 whatever. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Um, but it's just so much fun. It, this is a, an example of like a YA thriller that works for me. That is like so well done. I was invested. Um, it was just so much fun. So I went with a solid four stars and I can't wait to read uh, the last two books in the series. So I just want to like refresh my memory a little bit. Um, but yeah, highly recommend. Next I read Good Rich People and this was in the vlog that I read for like the worst books I read according to Goodreads. So if you want to hear full thoughts go check that one out. But in this book, what am I saying? In this book we are following this woman who her and her husband, they're rich people, and the husband's mom, so her mother-in-law, likes to invite other kind of rich people to live in her guest house, and they basically, like, do fucked up things to the person that lives there. They try to play these, like, sick, sinister games to, like, ruin their lives and just mess with the people that live there. And our main character is like, I'm not really sure if I agree with this, but... Her husband and his mom are like, no, this is your responsibility this time to mess with this person, to ruin this person's life, and like, you're gonna do it, or you're proving that you are not a loyal part of our family. So now, this woman just moved into the guest house, and we get her POV and our main character, rich lady. POV and flipping back and forth. There's twists, there's turns. It's silly, it's ridiculous. It's not a masterpiece, but it's a fun time, okay? If you like rich people drama, this one's funny. Next is another thriller, Someone Had to Do It by Amber, Amber and Danielle Brown. This one is another sort of rich people drama story. So we're following this woman, Brandy, and she uh, is this intern at for this famous fashion icon and she, you know she's cleaning up vomit and going on coffee runs and her boyfriend is a football player and he's like oh I uh, know the owner the fashion guy Simon he's like the owner of the fashion company am I making sense He's like, oh, I know his daughter, let me get you in touch with them, we'll go to a party, see if you can kind of wiggle your way into like getting a job interview for them. So then we start getting the POV from the daughter, Taylor, and she's like this rich little biatch, and she is so nasty, <laughs> such a terrible person, and she's just like, Oh well, I want to kill my dad because I'm afraid that I'm not going to get his family inheritance now that he's like engaged or whatever. So we're getting her POV and Brandy's POV and all the craziness that happens in this situation and it's a fun time. It's a wild time. It's very much like a thriller that has something to say about race, about class, privilege, about these people that are extremely wealthy. Like, it just has so much to say. And also, I loved that it just has like random smut, like out of nowhere, <laughs> which I'm not a big smut fan, but I just like how it's kind of pushing the boundaries of like other thrillers. It's not just like a PG rated safe thriller. Like it's very well written and it's like scandalous at times. So I was living for the drama. I was living for the tea. I really, really, really liked this one. So this was just like a solid book for me. Also, another book that I enjoyed was How I'll Kill You. This is a new thriller that just came out. I had an arc of it, so I finished it like the day that it was released. And this one, we are following these three identical triplets. They are female serial killers, and they basically get men to fall in love with them and then 
kill them. So now it's our main character's turn to get someone to fall in love with her so she can kill them. But the guy that is her target, she actually is falling in love with him. So there's a little bit of a romance subplot going on, which I am not a big fan of. Some of this book, I was like rolling my eyes. I was like, okay, let's get on with it. Like the first 50%, I was like, okay, let's get on with it. Uh, but the last 50%, I was really into. I think this one, if you don't mind a little bit of romance with your murder, <laughs> you'll like this one. It has twists, it has turns. It's thrilling at the end, and I, I don't know, I, the more that I think about it, the more I really liked where this one ended up going, and I did have to suspend my disbelief a little bit with like some of the things that the characters like did and thought, but I don't know, I think this is overall a really fun read. If you're looking for like a new thriller that's just like easy and fun. I would definitely check this one out. Then my last four star was Night of the Prowler by John Athen, an extreme horror slasher. This one was in my extreme horror vlog as well. And this one, we're just following this girl. She's like it, working in a convenience store at night by herself, working night shift. And at the same time, a serial killer is on the loose and she's listening to the radio, hearing about how this serial killer got out, and it's crazy. So we're getting her POV, which I was so invested in, and then alternating chapters with like the serial killer just brutally murdering everyone. Brutal, nasty, disgusting kills. Oh my god, the one with the elderly woman. Ah! Um, so anyways, yeah, full thoughts are in that vlog. Highly recommend if you're looking for just like a slasher, an extreme horror slasher. It's fucked up, but it's so good. Then I had three five star reads. The first one being a short story collection by Miss Judith Sonnet. And this one I read for that vlog. I'm like repeating myself over and over. And this was just nine extreme horror short stories. Um, this was wild. Such a wild time. I honestly, this is one of the very few short story collections that I genuinely loved every single story. Like there wasn't a single bad story in here. I was hooked the entire time. It sustained my attention. The Cum House is my favorite one. Need I say more? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I loved Cruising for Creeps, Toxic, Innards Fuck, <laughs> all the really messed up ones. Um, but this was just so fun. If you're looking for just like a fun extreme horror short story collection, look no further. Next five star read was a nonfiction and it is, what's the name of it? I always forget the name of it. If You Tell by Greg Olson. So this is a true crime book. I'm getting an earache. This is the story of this woman Shelly and all the fucked up things that she's done. So she is a serial killer. Uh, she's a, an extremely abusive woman. It's basically the story of these sisters and how they survived their mother and how basically their entire lives their mom was just so abusive and you're reading about the abuse that she put her children through and just like the fucked up things that she did and how the husband was going along with it and it was almost like he was totally brainwashed by this woman and the things that she did was so sick and disgusting and then people would like trust her and come and stay with them and like live with this woman because they thought that she was helping them and here she was like abusing these people horribly abusing these people and to their death killed like multiple people she killed her own nephew that she was raising as her son so fucked up so sad so messed up so heartbreaking. 
This book is fantastic though. Jumps right into the story. Like you don't get any like blah, 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 blah information that you don't need to know. It just jumps right in. Here's her childhood. Here's, you know, what was going on in the household and with her daughters. And it just gives you all the factual information that you need to know. And so well done. The audiobook, so well done. Highly recommend if you're a fan of true crime, but this is heavy, fucked up, and I highly recommend literally one of the best nonfiction books I think I've ever read in my life. Then my favorite book of the month, we all know it's Full Brutal by Christopher Triana, which is in the extreme horror vlog that I did. This is my new favorite extreme horror book of all time, of all time. One of my favorite books ever, probably the best book that I read so far this year. This is so good, Mwah. it's perfect. Oh, Kim, I love you. Um, <laughs> so we are following Kim, who's this popular cheerleader, and she goes down the road of sadism, and she's like, I am going to sleep with my teacher, I'm gonna get him to be obsessed with me, and then I'm gonna ruin his life. And then she starts hanging out with his family and tries to ruin his family's life and just goes down this crazy spiral. She is in freaking sane, okay? The things that she does, the, the places that this book goes, this book went in places I did not expect it to go. I was like, wild okay think mean girls meets Jennifer's body meets extreme horror like I just I don't know what else to say this book is a masterpiece I loved it so much literally one of the craziest funniest characters I've ever read in my life. I, Kim, I fucking hated her, but I was like, you know, she's like low-key funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I want to low-key be friends with Kim. Like, I'm just saying, okay? But, you know, trigger warnings for everything imaginable, obviously. The book gets more and more graphic and insane as you go on, but so good. So good. I love Christopher Triana, and that's it. That's my wrap up. Let me know in the comments down below your favorite book that you read in the month of March, and I will see you in my next video.